Ever wondered about the last man who met his end through the traditional and brutal method of dragging and quartering in France? Let's travel back in time to the year 1715. A baby boy was born into a humble family in the quiet town of Arras, France. His name was Robert Francois Damien. Growing up in a family of modest means, young Robert's life was far from exceptional. His days were filled with the typical struggles of a child born into a working class family in the 18th century. There were no telltale signs of the infamous path this unremarkable boy would eventually tread. His early years were spent under the watchful eyes of his parents, working hard and learning the ropes of life. His upbringing was as ordinary as one could imagine for a child of his time, making his later life all the more shocking. From his humble beginnings, no one could have predicted the infamous path Robert Francois Damien was destined to tread. Life has a peculiar way of steering us towards unexpected horizons. As we step back into the pages of history, we find Robert Francois Damien's, a man of humble background navigating the complexities of life as a servant. A life filled with the mundanity of chores and the ever-changing faces of employers became Damien's reality. As a young man, Damien's moved from one household to another, serving various individuals of differing ranks and statuses. This was a time when the societal structures were firmly entrenched and the gulf between the nobility and the commoners was vast. Damien's was deep in the trenches, serving those perched high above him, and this life exposed him to the glaring disparities of the French society. His journey took an intriguing turn when he found himself in the midst of the Jansenists, a religious sect known for their austere lifestyle and their criticism of the monarchy. Their beliefs resonated with Damien's, and the seeds of discontent towards the monarchy were sown in his heart. The Jansenists' influence was profound, shaping his worldview and stoking the embers of his growing resentment towards King Louis XV and the monarchy. King Louis XV, a man of grandeur and power, was the embodiment of everything Damien's had come to resent. The king's opulence and his disregard for the hardships of the common people fueled Damien's anger. The monarchy in Damien's eyes had become a symbol of injustice, a beacon of inequality that shone brightly in the darkness of societal disparity. In the heart of this ordinary servant, a dangerous idea began to take root. The idea of challenging the monarchy of standing against the oppression seemed increasingly appealing to Damien's. He was no longer just a servant, he was a man with a cause, a man poised on the precipice of history. Little did he know his actions would echo through the corridors of time, marking him as the last man to meet a fate so brutal, so gruesome, that it would send shivers down the spine of history itself. In the heart of this ordinary servant, a dangerous idea began to take root. Sometimes a single moment can define our entire existence. The cold dawn of January 5th, 1757, held an ominous event in the heart of Versailles. Robert Francois Damien, a man of humble origins, stirred from the shadows with a deadly intent. His target? None other than King Louis XV of France, the monarch draped in opulence and absolute power. Damien's, driven by a complex cocktail of motivations, was no stranger to the palace. Once a domestic servant within the royal household, he was privy to the inner workings of the court. His resentment grew, fueled by the stark contrast between the king's extravagance and the plight of the common people. His plan, however, was as ill-conceived as it was audacious. Armed with a small knife, Damien's made his way through the palace, his heart pounding with every echoing footstep. His moment came when he found himself within arm's reach of the king. Without hesitation, he lunged, stabbing Louis in the side. But his attempt was far from lethal. The knife barely penetrated the king's thick winter clothing, leaving him with a superficial wound. The repercussions of Damien's failed attempt were immediate and severe. The palace erupted into chaos, and within moments, Damien's was seized. His act was not just an attack on a man, but an attack on the monarchy, the state, and the very fabric of French society. The failed assassination attempt sent shockwaves through France and beyond. It was a stark reminder of the deep-seated unrest bubbling beneath the surface, an unrest that would eventually culminate in the French Revolution. For Damien, the consequences were dire. 
His fate was sealed. He had dared to strike a king and had to face the wrath of a kingdom. In the blink of an eye, Robert Francois Damien had etched his name in the annals of history. Every action has its consequences and Damien's was no exception. After his failed attempt to assassinate King Louis V, Robert Francois Damien was swiftly apprehended. The wheels of justice, as they often do in times of political unrest, began to turn with ruthless efficiency. The trial that followed was a spectacle of severity. Damien's, a man of humble origins, was thrust into the elaborate theatre of the French courts. Here, the legal proceedings were less about finding truth and more about delivering a message. An assassination attempt on the king was not just a crime, it was an affront to the monarchy, a challenge to the divine order. The trial was a stage upon which the state demonstrated its power, its authority, and its unyielding resilience. Damien's was interrogated, not only to ascertain his guilt, but also to uncover any potential conspiracies. The question was not if he had tried to kill the king, but why. Was it a solitary act of madness, or was it part of a larger, more sinister plot? Despite the harshness of his interrogation, Damien's maintained that he had acted alone. The public's reaction to Damien's act was a mixture of horror and fascination. To some, he was a villain, a madman who had dared to strike at their beloved king. To others, he was a symbol of defiance, a man who had dared to challenge the might of the monarchy. The trial concluded as it was always destined to. Damien's was found guilty of regicide, the most heinous of crimes. The punishment was severe, a gruesome echo of the harshness of his act. But even as the verdict was read out, even as the weight of his actions bore down upon him, Damien's stood defiant. He had dared to challenge the king, and for that he would pay the ultimate price. His fate was sealed, but his legacy was just beginning. The final act in this tragic drama was as brutal as it was unforgettable. Robert Francois Damiens, a man whose name would forever be entwined with infamy, met his end on a cold day in March of 1757. His execution was no ordinary affair. Damien's was to be the last individual in France to experience the harrowing punishment of being drawn and quartered, a method reserved for regicides, those audacious enough to attempt to assassinate the king. The spectacle began in the Grand Square of Paris, a city that had witnessed much yet was unprepared for the macabre display that was about to unfold. Damien's was first subjected to what was known as the Question Extraordinaire a horrific form of torture involving the pouring of boiling oil and molten lead into his wounds. This was just a precursor to the main event, the execution itself. Damien's was then tied to four horses, each straining against the ropes that secured them, their hooves digging into the cobblestones. With a signal from the executioner, the horses were spurred into a gallop, wrenching Damien's apart in a gruesome display of state-sanctioned brutality. The crowd watched in a mix of horror and fascination. Some fainted, others prayed, and a few even cheered. It was a ghastly spectacle that seared itself into the collective memory of the French people. The brutality of the Ancien Régime was laid bare for all to see, a stark reminder of the lengths to which the monarchy would go to preserve its power. The impact of Damien's death reverberated through French society. It served as a grim reminder of the absolute power of the monarchy and the severe consequences for those who dared to challenge it. Yet, it also sparked a debate about the humanity and justice of such brutal punishments, a debate that would continue to simmer until it boiled over in the French Revolution several decades later. In death, Robert-Francois Damien became a symbol of the brutalities of the Ancien Régime. His execution marked a dark chapter in French history, a testament to the violent lengths the monarchy would go to protect its rule. History often remembers the infamous more than the virtuous. How true this rings when we reflect on the life of Robert-Francois Damiens. Born in obscurity, Damiens etched his name into the annals of history through an act of defiance, a failed assassination attempt on King Louis XV, his motivations were as complex as the man himself. A servant disillusioned by the excesses of the monarchy, Damien's actions were driven by a potent mix of personal ambition and political dissatisfaction. His unsuccessful attempt, however, led to a brutal end 
making him the last man in France to suffer the archaic punishment of drawing and quartering. Today, Damien's story serves as a stark reminder of the lengths to which individuals are pushed when disparity and power imbalances reach their limits. His tale, though gruesome, has found its place in the annals of French history, remembered as a symbol of defiance against power. From an obscure servant to a symbol of defiance, the life and death of Robert Francois Damiens remain etched in history, a testament to extremes of human ambition and the brutalities of power.